This video will be adding health and ammo collectibles. We'll be giving our player a limited amount of ammo and they'll be able to collect that ammo by picking up ammo packs and restoring their health with a health pack. So let's get started. To get started, we're going to go to our web browser. And now that we're here, we're going to go to open game art. And the first link that we see. And today we're going to be looking for two sprites. We're going to be looking for a health pack and we're going to be looking for a skull. So now we found the two sprites we're going to be using. Here we have a health pack and here we have a pixel skull. And we're going to be creating the ammo pack through the previously used ammo sprite. So let's go ahead and then load our two sprites. And now that we have them downloaded, we're going to import them into Scratch. So here at the bottom right where it says choose a sprite, here's where we're going to import them. You just go up here. So we just upload the skull and our health pickup. And we're going to edit the health pickup sprite. So we're going to go to costumes and we're going to choose one of these. We're just going to choose the first one and delete the shadow. So just go ahead and delete the shadow and then delete the rest of the health packs and center this one. Now what we're going to do is change our health pack to the color red as it, I feel it's more fitting for a health pack. And now I'm done editing the health pickup. I'm going to go to the code. And we're going to do a few adjustments. We're going to move this skull here as it's going to be representing the amount of kills that our player has. So we're just going to make it a bit bigger. Let's see, 150. Yeah, that looks better. And then our health bar, we're also going to make it bigger. So we're just going to press it right here and make it 125. Yeah, that's perfect. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add three components. We're going to be making our health come at different places when our health is lower and we're going to create a kill variable to record the amount of kills that our player has and we're also going to add an amount of ammo which our player is able to use at a time so let's first start with our health variable so what we're going to do is we're going to go to variables and we're going to create a variable called health pack limit and what this variable will do is make sure that not more than three health packs are on the screen at a time so we're going to just hide it and go to events and we're going to say that when flag clicked and then a forever loop and then we're going to wait um, a random amount of seconds so we find random in operators and we're going to choose from three to five seconds and then once at three to five seconds we're going to look in control if health limit is less than three so we'll go to operators and say if health pack limit is less than three then we're going to create a clone in control we find the clone and we say create a clone of myself. So now that we have this, we're going to say that when the health pack starts as a clone, what we're going to do is we're going to make it come at a random place. So we're going to go to go to random position. And once it goes to a random position, what we want it to do is change the health pack limit by one so that our game knows that there's more health on the screen so that they can update this health pack limit. Another thing we want to do is make sure that the health pack doesn't appear if our player is already full on health. So we go to control and we're going to say that if, then we're going to say if not, we're going to say that if our health does not equal to 100, 
then we can continue on with this script. So 100. So now next what we want to do is go to looks and do what we've done with our zombies and with our bullets. What we're going to do is hide the original health pack and only show it when it starts as a clone. So now next what we want to do is we're going to create a forever loop. And we're going to say that if the health pack is touched by the player, then we go to variables and we're going to change health by 10. And then we're going to look that if the health ends up exceeding 100, we're going to set it back to 100 because we never want our health to become higher than 100. So we are going to go to operators and say that if our health is greater than 100, then we're going to set health to 100. And now that that is done, we're going to go back to control and we're going to delete the clone once it's done with this script. So now let's test it. Let's wait for some zombies to show up and let them take a bit of our life. Now let's start moving away and start attacking our zombies and take a health pack and we see that our health didn't update and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our health bar and we're going to create a brand new message and we're going to call this health gain because the health variable did update but it didn't show the update on the health bar so what we're going to do is say we're going to increase the costume number by one. So we go to our plus operator and increase our costume number by one. And then we'll go back to our health pack. We go to events and then we will say health gain and then we'll broadcast the health gain. But we, we only want it to update by one if health is less than a hundred. So we're going to create an if statement and make sure that health is less than 100 before we actually tell the health bar to update. So we're going to say less than one, less than 100 our health. And now the last thing we're going to need to do is make sure that we reset our health pack limit at the beginning of each match because if we don't set it, if we don't reset it, then it may end up not actually showing up on our screen. So we will set health pack limit to zero at the beginning of the game. Now let's see what happens once we get eaten by a zombie. Ooh, my brains. Now let's look for a health pack. Now we see nothing actually happened. And this is because we changed health by 10 and then looked if our health is less than 100. So that was our problem right there. So we, meet, we need to make sure that we look if health is less than 100 before actually changing it. Because then it will end up being 100 and then it will look to see if it's less than 100, but it's not less than 100. So it won't actually broadcast the health gain. So now another thing which we want to do is say that if our health pack is touching our skull, or if it ends up touching the health bar, we want it to go somewhere else because we don't want an instance where our health pickup is behind this health bar. It won't be visible to our player. So let's go ahead and edit this script for that. So that what we're going to say now is go to control and we're going to put all this, we're going to test this first and say that if we're either touching, so we're going to get the operator or, because we're going to be testing two different possibilities. We're going to be testing if we're touching the health bar or if we're touching the skull. So I'm just going to rename the skull to skull instead of skull one. And then if that ends up happening, then we'll just move to a random position again. So that should make sure that our health isn't going to be end up isn't going to be covered by anything 
in the screen. So now what we want to do is create a kill variable. So what we're going to go is go to our variables and we're going to create a brand new variable called kills. And we're going to go to our zombie and we're going to say that every time it's touched by a bullet, we simply change kills by one. And we're going to go to our player sprite and we're going to set our kills to zero at the beginning of the game. And you can, um, this isn't mandatory to do in the player sprite. I just prefer that it's done in the player sprite. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is edit how our kill variable looks. So it says the word and that's not what we want because this skull is going to be representing the word instead of it. So what we're going to do is choose large readout. You right click on it and then choose the large readout and then just move it right here. Okay, now, now that that is done, we're going to ensure that the skull is at the top of the layers. So we're going to go to events and say when flag clicked, go to front layer. Now what you want to do is add an ammo variable and some ammo pickup. So what we're going to do is we're going to import another sprite. We're going to import our ammo sprite and we're going to make a few adjustments to it. So we're going to go to costume and what we're going to do is we're going to choose the select, delete the top one, delete the bottom one, select the middle one and rotate it 90 degrees so that it's facing upwards. And then what you're going to do is copy it and paste it and put it right next to it and copy it and paste it and do that one more time. Okay, there we go. That will be our ammo pickup and we're going to make it bigger. We're going to make it size one, two, five. Yep, that should be fine for the ammo pickup. And we're just going to rename it to ammo pickup. And we're going to do the same code as we've done for the health pickup. We start in events and say that when flag clicked forever, then we will say wait a random amount of seconds in operators we say pick three to five and then we're going to create a clone which is found in control and we create a clone of myself every three to five seconds but now what we want to do is create a new variable so that we can have a limit of ammo that the player is allowed to carry at once so we're going to go to variable and create a brand new variable called ammo And now that we have this brand new variable, we're going to make it a large readout, move it to the bottom right, and we're going to duplicate this sprite, delete the code from it, and call it the ammo display. We're going to then make it bigger. And move and move it to the bottom right. So right there is where our ammo is going to be shown. So the only code we're going to add here is go to control, go to events and say when flag clicked, go to the front layer. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go to our ammo pickup and start spawning in ammo pickups. So let's go to our, to our controls and say when I start as a clone, we then want to go to a random position in motion, we find, we find that in motion. And then what we want to do is go to looks and then show it and then hide it when the game starts so that we hide the original ammo. And then we're going to go to our control and then say forever. We want it to see if we touch the player then we are going to increase ammo. So let's go to sensing and see if we're touching the player. Then what we're going to do is change ammo. Now here is where you have the choice of either choosing a set number, like for example, five or 10, or you can go the random route and have it a random number. So you can choose from three to seven. 
so it can be anywhere from three to seven so if the player is lucky they can get seven ammo but if they're unlucky they'll only end up getting three so then once we change it by our random number we're going to then look if the ammo is greater than now here's where you're going to choose your ammo limit you can choose it from anywhere from 50 100 20 but just make sure that the change work hand in hand with the ammo limit so here i'm going to go with 40 will be our ammo limit for for this game then we're going to say if ammo ends up exceeding 40, then we're going to set ammo to 40. And then what we want to do is set ammo to zero at the beginning of the game. And now that we've done that, we need to go to our bullet and we're going to look that if ammo is greater than zero, then we can end up shooting our pistol. So right here where it says, when flag click, create a clone of myself, will only create this clone if ammo is greater than zero. So let's go to control and then say if our ammo is greater than zero. So we get our ammo variable and see if it's greater than zero, then we can create this clone. We're going to add delete this clone and make sure it's inside the if touching player so that we only delete the clone right after we touch the player. So we want to go to bullet, variables, and change ammo by negative one when we create a clone of the bullet. So now that will decrease our ammo every time we shoot. So now what we want to do is make sure that our zombies aren't walking under the health pack or ammo pack. We want the zombies to walk over them. So what we're going to do is go to our ammo pickup, go to looks. And when the ammo starts as a clone, we just send it to the back layer. Same with the health pickup. We send, once it starts as a clone, we send it to the back layer. So let's go ahead and test what we've just created. We click on the flag and see what we've got. We've got some ammo there, pick it up and shoot and our ammo decreases every time we shoot but now we can't shoot anymore since our ammo is finished we can get eaten by some zombies our health decreases and every time we kill them our kill count goes higher and we can heal ourselves so that is it for this episode thank you for watching make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode where we will be adding more guns to our game we're going to be adding a shotgun an assault rifle and a knife so that our player has more diverse options when they want to attack our zombie thank you for watching goodbye